Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health here in Anchorage. I'd like to thank Alaska Public Media for allowing us to bring you hangar flying. This evening's guest is Jane Dale. She's the Executive Director of the Alaska Air Carriers Association. Jane, welcome to the program. Thank you for having us. I know you've been very busy planning and organizing this year's Living Legends Banquet. We're very excited to hear about some of the legends who are going to be honored this year. Can you give us a little bit of background and tell us who they are? Sure. We have seven legends. Uh, our Kitty Banner and Kimball Forest are together, and Kitty and Kimball um, operated out of Talkeetna, Alaska. Uh, Kitty started from Wisconsin and made her way west and always wanted to come to Alaska to fly and even finish college. She made it up here in 1976 and started flying for a gentleman who had just acquired a air taxi, Talkeetna Air Taxi. It, it, it was a new name and he needed more pilots. Meanwhile, Kimball Forrest, who started flying in high school and earned all, the, all of his ratings, probably by his second year of college, was uh, flying out of Kotzebue at Baker Aviation. Well, Kimball and Kitty met up in Talkeetna and they decided to buy a 135 operation and together they created K2. So that was the beginning of K2. Our next legend is Pete Haglin, who lives, born and raised in Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, he earned his instrument and his commercial rating around 1967-1968 and purchased Tanana Air. And he flew his entire career in the interior and uh, after retiring he became the director and the curator for the Pioneer Air Museum. So he's still busy. Um, George Tibbet Sr. was based at King Salmon in the military and decided to stay. He created his own Part 135 operator and carved out a niche flying workers to all the canneries, all within 50 miles of Naknek. Oh, wow. Yes. And uh, George Tibbetts started out in a PA-11 flying passengers to the canneries and landing on the mud flats. There were no airstrips. People would get out and they'd walk along boards he laid down so that they could get back up to the cannery. Oh. So he was instrumental in building airstrips at all the cannery locations. And then they were able to improve the aircraft that they used and he was instrumental in adding seat belts or getting the right nose gear that was heavy for the terrain they were landing on and you know just other things in the industry that made it safe for them to fly. He was also a mentor to our next legend who is um, Dick Harding and when we mention Dick Harding's name we think of safety. I mean he was working in the industry for decades mm -hmm. And while working in high-level management at Penn Air, you know, he introduced risk management. And that is a big part of the Medallion Foundation that he served as president for a number of years. You know, he had a 38-year flying career. He's still flying, I think. And um, he's earned over 30,000 miles. So we're going to hear some of the, his adventures at the banquet. And then... Heidi Roos. Heidi was born in Zurich, Switzerland. She met her husband to be Herman uh, when she was still 16 years old. And it wasn't long after that, four or five years, they eventually married in the United States and they began their life journey. Uh, aviation was a part of it from early on. She earned all of her degrees while Herman was working in New Mexico. Uh, they'd lived in Alaska uh, a couple times. The last time they stayed, Heidi created Arctic Flyers, which is a flight school mm -hmm. that's still in operation, and she's still scheduled to fly <laughs> more than she uh, hopes to be. Uh, and she, too, has earned over 30,000 hours. Flying is fun. Life is an adventure for Heidi. She's enjoyed every minute of it. There's no question. And then Chuck Cesara. Chuck Cesara got the bug to fly when he was really early. 
uh, very young. He was living with his family in Florida. Uh, they were moving to um, the Panama Canal area and they had to take a flying boat to Cuba where they would make another connection to go to Panama. And uh, it, it changed his outlook on life and from then on he always wanted to be a pilot. He met his um, wife uh, in California and together they drove up to Alaska and through a number of careers, Chuck uh, flew over 160 different airplanes and also earned about 30,000 hours. So we have some great legends this year. Wow, that's a really impressive list, Jane. I'm really proud of the people in Alaska that helped develop aviation to make it as safe as it is today. And I'm really thankful that your organization is honoring them. So thank you for being here and telling us about them. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Hangar Flying. And we hope you too can appreciate some of the folks that went before us and have helped make aviation as safe as it is today. Until next time, Fly safely.